So when I was going through SEAL training, um, you know, guys quit for various reasons um, at, at various points all through training. But something that uh, was a common denominator of guys that I got to talk to who quit and then later on down the road when I got to, um, after I'd already become a SEAL and I was working with guys going through training and I got to talk to more quitters, I found this common denominator uh, among guys who made this decision during BUDS. They say, well, I just decided that I didn't want to do this anymore, mm. right? They changed how they felt about becoming a SEAL. I used to, this used to be, you know, so important to me that I would give up everything in my life to do it. Yeah. And then I changed how I felt about it. I decided that I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. And I thought that was so baffling to me that you would come this far because to make it two buds, you have already been through so much training and you've already made a lot of commitments. You've signed your life away to the Navy. You've spent years training. Um, you're, you're in the Navy and so and on a SEAL contract. And if you fail SEAL training, uh, you go out to the Navy as an undesignated seaman, which is like the worst place to be in the Navy. Truly that, you know, instructors would say all the time, uh, if you guys quit, you're going to be, you know, on a ship, chip and paint. And you think that's a joke. And it's not a joke. I ran into uh, guys multiple times at the other base in Coronado, uh, guys that I had uh, been in training with and who had quit. And they would like tell me for real that they that's exactly what they had done after they quit. They were out chipping paint off of a ship. They're going to go out here with a hammer and a chisel and we're going to... Uh, f- um, chip the paint off the side of the ship so that we can repaint it. And they would just do that for weeks on end because ships are huge. So the, the point of this story, look, you know, looking at these guys, you don't make the decision once you're already in, like you don't come yeah. this far, commit to the Navy, sign up for it and then say, you know, I don't think I want to do this anymore. And so my takeaway from that is as I worked with uh, tadpoles I actually did a, um, Zach, my assistant, and I did a, a PST this morning uh, with a tadpole. As I work with tadpoles, one of the things that I help them realize is the flight plan for their life right. and the decision point of becoming a SEAL. Once you sign your contract and you join the Navy, you don't decide, you know, I don't think I want to fly anymore. I don't think I want to do this anymore. Um, and, and you might be in your head, you might be saying to me, well, what if you, you know, what if you change how you feel? What I'm telling these students is that you need to make that decision before you get there. You don't take on $150,000 in student debt and do three years of college and say, you know what, I don't think I want to do this anymore. Right. Um, those poor decisions that you make, you can make that decision. No one's saying you can't make it, but there's extreme consequences. Right. Right. You have, you have this debt load of student debt after you decided, you know what, I don't think I want to be an engineer anymore. Yeah. You have years in the Navy of a job that you're not going to like that will not fulfill you uh, like a prison sentence for you to sit there and think about the decision that you made. Right. right? And so I'm not saying that you can't make a poor decision. I'm trying to, the, the point of decision points is to keep you from making a wrong decision, mm. right? To make the decision to fly or die, to to conquer or die as Hernan Cortez, to take off or do a go around before the point where there's extreme consequences.